Step 4. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Step 4 helps us see exactly what our problems are and shows us our strengths. Let's face it, when we were using, we weren't very honest with ourselves. We are finally beginning to become honest when we admit our addiction has whipped us and that we need help. It took a long time to get where we could admit we were beaten. We are probably not going to recover physically, mentally or emotionally, overnight. Step 4 is going to help us toward recovery more than we can imagine. Most of us were surprised to find that we had many good points in our inventory. Ask anyone who has some time on the program and who has the kind of life you want for yourself, they will tell you that the fourth step was a turning point in their lives. Some people make the mistake of approaching the fourth step as if it were a confession of how horrible they are, what a bad person they had been. This is not the purpose of the fourth step. We are trying to free ourselves of living in old, useless patterns. We take the fourth step to gain the necessary strength and insight to enable us to grow in this new way of life. A binge of emotional sorrow over real or imagined wrongs will not help us. In fact, it can be quite harmful. Our purpose is to be rid of guilt, not wallow in it. We must be done with the past, not cling to it. We want to look our past in the face and see it for what it was, and then to release it so that we can live today. The past, for most of us, has been a ghost in the closet. We have been afraid to open that closet for fear of what that ghost may do to us. You don't have to do this alone. Your will and your life are now in the hands of the source of all strength tap into the source. Writing a thorough and honest inventory looks impossible to most of us. It is, if we are operating under our own power. Take a few quiet moments before writing and pray for the power to carry it out. Don't write the inventory with any particular person in mind. If you do that, you may wind up slanting what you write in order to please them. Only time will tell and the fifth step will take care of itself. Stay here in the now. You are on step 4. We cannot do step 5 until we have completed step 4. You may approach the fourth step in a number of ways. It is advisable that before you start, go over the first three steps with your sponsor. Be comfortable with your understanding of these steps. Allow yourself the privilege of feeling good about what you are doing. Don't be driven as you were so long driven by drugs. We have been trashing about for a long time and have gotten nowhere. Now, we are going to take it easy and not let things frighten us. With pen and paper, we begin the moral inventory. If the word moral bothers us, we call it a positive-negative inventory, or a good-bad inventory. The way to write an inventory is to write it. Thinking about an inventory, talking about it, theorizing the inventory, will not get it written. Sit down with a notebook, pray, pick up your pen and start writing. All we seek to do is find out which things about ourselves need changing. If we were grocers we would not hesitate to separate the rotten fruit from the good and throw out the rotten fruit. The NA program has the fourth step with which we examine ourselves. It is important to remember where we came from so that we don't return. We had to go through what we did to get to where we are now. A basic rule of thumb is that we can write too little, but we never write too much. The inventory will fit the individual, we simply write until the brain is emptied. Anything we think about is possibly inventory material. We realize how little we have to lose and how much we have to gain. We plunge into this step without reservation. We remove these thorns in the side by listing them on paper. As recovering addicts we sit down with paper and pen and pray for God's help in revealing the defects that are causing pain and suffering. We pray for the courage to be fearless and thorough so that this inventory may help us put our lives in order. When we pray and take action it always goes better for us. As using addicts, we lived under a regime of fear. In attaining our new life, we want it free of unreasonable fear. A lot of times we try to look good in front of other people, but deep down inside we are really afraid of who we are and where we came from. We write down our fears, our resentments and our guilt. We examine in depth our relationships with people, places and situations asking ourselves what we have demanded of these relationships. Often the answers will show that we are placing unreasonable demands on reality. We find that we are demanding other people to stop being who they are. Most of us have found that we were neither so terrible nor so wonderful as we supposed. Ultimately, we are just human with the same fears, longings and troubles as everyone else. 
One of the greatest benefits of the NA program is discovering that we need never be alone again. Others have felt as we feel. Others have failed where we failed. They are here now in the strength of the fellowship, ready and eager to help us. This fourth step can be a wonderful adventure, reviewing our past performance and our present behavior to see what we want to keep and what we want to be rid of. This step has the reputation of being difficult. In reality, it's quite simple. As recovering addicts, we now have the right to reach for levels of greater comfort and we can reach them, when we get a handle on what we've been doing wrong. If we want to feel good, we have to stop doing the things that make us feel bad. We are not going to be perfect. If we were perfect, we would not be human. The important thing is that we do our best. We use the tools available to us, and because we do not want to lose any of what we have gained, we will want to continue in the program. It is our experience that no matter how searching and thorough, no inventory is of any lasting effect, unless it is promptly followed by an equally thorough step 5.